So class, this is section 2.3 on graphing equations of lines. Uh, we do have a ton of vocab here, so go ahead and pause it and write this down and then uh, go over it together. Uh, first up is a family of functions. This is kind of math weird. Uh, you know, mathematicians are an odd group of people. And what we have decided to come with for terminology is that functions with similar characteristics are in the same family. We're basically making them people. So uh, the type of function that we're looking at in section 2.3 is going to be called the linear family, which basically just means that when you graph them, they make lines. I'm trying to make straight lines here. So you know, it, it doesn't, they don't have to be straight up and down or straight horizontal, um, but just some sort of line uh, like all of those would be. We are going to study plenty of other families this year. We're going to study quadratics and, and uh, absolute value graphs with a V shape. We're going to be studying things that look like this or like this or tons of different types of functions, even really weird things that look like, like this is a terrible example, but things that look like that. So we're going to be studying a lot of different uh, types of functions, but uh, currently we are looking at the linear family. Uh, the parent function is going to be the most basic function that meets the criteria of the family. So the parent function of the linear family, the ones that we're looking at today, would just be the equation y equals x. Or, of course, we're kind of getting to the notation f of x uh, inside of y equals x. Um, this makes a graph, this makes a line that goes through the origin through 0, 0, and goes has a slope of one. So it's going up one over one, up one over one, um, just a perfect diagonal. Like uh, that's what the parent function of the linear family does. The so y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. This of course is the y-axis. And the x-intercept is gonna be where the graph crosses the x-axis. This would be the x-intercept, or the x-axis, sorry. So wherever the graph crosses the x-intercept. Pay attention to the parent function. Its y-intercept is at zero, and its x-intercept is at zero, right? We're, we want the parent function to be really basic, as many zeros and ones as we can. So uh, both the x-intercept and the y-intercept have uh, are exist at zero, and the slope is one. You guys, this should all be review, but slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. And then standard form is not, you guys don't know it as well as slope intercept form. You guys spent a majority of your time in algebra one in slope intercept form, but standard form is ax plus by equals c. We are going to be talking about graphing from slope intercept form and from standard form in this lecture. So as I was stating, all linear equations are in the same family. I know the terminology is weird, but mathematicians are weird, so, so I guess you just kind of got to get used to it. When you first started learning how to graph, um, probably before algebra one, what your teacher would have you do, let's pretend it's y equals x, because we're going back to the very beginning. Uh, what your teacher would have you do is you would make a little t table like this, and you would enter probably negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And for x, and you see what you get out for y. So let's just look at how to graph the parent function y equals x using this very, very, uh, you know, basic method. Basically, what you would do is you would say, okay, what happens when I plug negative 2 in for x? Then y is negative 2, right? If I put in a negative 2 for x, then y equals negative 2. If I plug in a negative 1 for x, then y is negative 1. This function just spits out whatever you put in. Right. If you and so if negative two goes in, negative two comes out. If negative one goes in, negative one comes out. Uh, the input and the output are going to match. We should be good at graphing uh, points. Negative two, negative two would be here. Right. X first, then Y. Negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, two, two. Uh, as described earlier, we're going to get this perfect uh, diagonal line. That looks like that. So that is y equals x, the most basic function in the family.
Eventually, your teachers taught you a different way to graph. You weren't stuck using this t-table every time right, that we just made. Uh, you eventually learned how to graph from y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. Uh, as the name suggests, you know the slope and the intercept. m is your slope and b is your y intercept. So how you would graph these functions, remember this is your y-axis, the vertical one. This is, so mx plus b, the b value is 2. That's where the graph crosses the y-axis. You guys remember this, hopefully. So uh, the graph is going to cross the y-axis at the point 2, or at the y-intercept of 2, and its slope is negative 1. We like to think of slope as a fraction. And you guys should know that um, negative 1 as a fraction would just be negative 1 over 1. Also recall that slope means rise over run. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to rise negative 1, which is to say go down 1 and then run 1. Rise negative 1, run 1. We should be getting a line that, as we read it from left to right, is going down because our slope is negative. And that's what we do have. We have this line right here. We could do this exact same idea with this equation. This one's y-intercept is at negative 3, so you're going to find negative 3 on the y-axis and put a dot there. And its slope is 1 over 2. Remember, slope means rise over run. So you're going to rise 1 and run 2. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. You can keep doing this forever. Uh, you could also go, like, two negatives also make a positive. So it could be negative 1 over negative 2. This also is the same as 1 half. So we could rise negative 1 and run negative 2. It would be on the same line. I promise there would be some graphing from standard form as well. Uh, standard form is not as easy to graph most of the time for students, um, but what I want to encourage you guys to utilize, and I do this all the time throughout this year, is make this little t-table with zeros in the corners. That's how I refer to it as well. T-table with zeros in the corners, I'll say that. And I think if you can make this t-table, it actually becomes a fairly easy question to answer. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. Uh, a, B, and C would all be numbers. So, for example, 3X plus 8Y equals 24. That would be standard form. X first with a number, Y with a number, and then equals something. Uh, with standard form, we're going to be doing this in section 2.4, so I feel like it's valuable to point out none of these numbers should be fractions in standard form. If they are, it's not standard form. So. Here's an example of an equation in standard form. Like I said, they're much more difficult to graph if you try to do traditional methods. If you try to do this t-table, you're plugging negative 2 in for x, figuring out what y is, plugging in negative 1. You're going to end up plotting a bunch of fractions, which is fine, but maybe not ideal. The other option is to solve for y, but I do think that's a hassle that isn't necessary. Instead, what I want you guys to think is make this little t-table with zeros in the corners. For this one here, you're going to plug 0 in for x. Plugging in 0 for x makes this go away. Right? Because 5 times 0 is 0. It went away. Now you just have this statement to solve. 2y equals 10. We know how to solve this. You divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and you end up with 5. So what did I do? I plugged in 0 for x, which made it go away, because plugging in 0 makes the, that whole term 0. And then I figured out what value made it true here. Sometimes you're going to easily be able to tell, hey, 5 is the number. Sometimes you might have to be like, OK, divide by 2, divide by 2. Now y is by itself, and it's equal to 5. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but plug in 0 for y. Plugging in 0 for y makes this one go away. And now I solve for x. Well, divide by 5, divide by 5, and I get 2 as my answer for that. 
So now when it comes to actually graphing, I'm just going to plot these two points. 0, 5 is up here, and 2, 0 is there. And then I just get to play connect the dots. I'm going to do so with a straight line. Play connect the dots, and I have my answer. That's all there is to it. Graphing from standard form is actually really easy if you know what you're doing. Go ahead and pause it here and try this one. So first, like I said, you would plug in 0 for x. That makes this go away. And now we have negative 2y equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 2, and you get negative 6. Now let's erase all that. Try again. We'll plug in 0 for y. Plugging in 0 for y makes this one go away. Divide by 3, divide by 3, I get 4. 0, negative 6 is there, and 4, 0 is there. And there are graph it. Very exciting, I know. I want to point out something about horizontal and vertical lines, because these are going to happen all of the time. And oftentimes they are conflated or mixed up with each other. So horizontal lines, when graphed, will be y equals c, where c is a constant at some number. y equals 3. If I told you to graph y equals 3 and you did it properly, you would have a horizontal line. Vertical lines, on the other hand, are written in the form x equals c, where, I, where c is that constant. Uh, those are going to be your up and down equations, obviously, your up and down uh, graphed, when, when graphed. Remember, c is going to be some number here. So y equals negative 3 is our example here. I know I already said that y equals is going to be a horizontal line, but I want to talk about how I, because you're not always going to have your notes on you, and you are going to be expected to graph them on tests and everything. So I think that this is actually a really easy trick to graph them correctly 100% of the time, is to go back to this idea of a table. Y equals negative 3. The only thing that we know for sure is that Y is negative 3. There isn't an X there, so X just doesn't matter. You can pick anything that you want for X. You can pick 2, you can pick 5, you can pick negative 3. When you go ahead and plot these points, 2, negative 3, 5, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, you're going to see that they make a horizontal line. And think about this with me for a second. Everywhere on this line, no matter where you can go forever, right? Everywhere on the line, the x value is changing, but the y value is always negative 3, right? The y value is negative 3 there and there and there. That's why this is working. For this one, we can do this the exact same way, but the x value is always 1. We don't know anything about the y value. It's not even listed. Right? So the x, the y value could be 3, it could be 4, it could be negative 5. It doesn't matter because there isn't a y value there. So then when you plot these, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, negative 5, you're going to get a vertical line. And if you think about this with me, you're going to see that the x value is 1 every at every point along here. But the y value is the thing that's changing, and so we have graphed that plot. That's all I have for you guys for section 2.3. I'm going to make a section 2.3b that is showing you how to graph using your graphing calculator. Many times this year, you're not going to be able to graph them easily by hand like we are in this section. So you're going to have to graph using your calculator, and I'm going to make a lecture on that here in a second.